Hi, I'm Patrick Mannion, Editor-in-Chief of Tech Online, and I'm here in Dallas at the Texas Instruments Developer Conference, where we've seen excite exciting announcements from the OMAP 35XX architecture right through to low-power MSP430 uh, products and, and technologies that are emerging over the coming years. Here to join me to sum it, to sum it all up is TI's um, President and CEO, Rich Templeton. Hi, Rich. How are you doing? Doing great. Can you sum it all up for us, please? Yeah, you know, Patrick, we've had a great week, uh, and it was a, a week where I've been in the semiconductor industry for 28 years now, and I've never seen as much innovation, uh, breadth of new applications in terms of medical field or industrial or consumer, uh, new video applications. Uh, so we're just pretty excited about what we see our customers doing. Uh, we're working on some of the world's toughest problems. Uh, we talked about the challenges of medical. Uh, the challenges of energy and energy saving, the challenges of personal safety, and then a world of low power and no power. And uh, we've got some really great people working on that stuff. So, What sort of things are you doing to address medical? I know that medical has been a very high point for you here at the conference. Yeah, it's, a, it's an area where, and to put it in perspective, we, uh, I just look very simply at uh, semiconductors have revolutionized computing. We've seen what it's done to the PC over 50 years. Uh, it's revolutionized communications. Look at the cell phone. But when you think about medical technology or health today, we've had very little impact to semiconductor technology. So think of worlds of imaging. And we saw some great demos this week of portable devices that will let EMS technicians actually bring care right to the point right. of, uh, of emergency use, uh, all the way down to embedded medical devices that can change the quality of life that people have. So we're looking at a very broad range of applications. The applications are exciting, but what do you see market-wise, potentially, dollar-wise speaking? Well, you know, I think it can be a large business, and uh, we're very careful because it's always in the future, but I wouldn't know why this can't be uh, a billion-dollar type marketplace, even for just TI, uh, five or ten years down the road. What sort of uh, technologies is that TI bringing to bear on that? Well, think about the challenges of imaging or embedded medical electronics, and it's a number of things you actually talked about in the opening. Uh, it's about analog circuits. It's about deep low power, be it low power DSPs or low power microcontrollers. It's about how per high performance DSPs, because when you're trying to do imaging uh, for an ultrasound, it's about processing those dis that display image very rapidly. So we actually have a broad spectrum of technologies across our DSP, our microcontroller and our analog families that we can bring to bear. One of the big announcements for the show this week was the OMAP 35XX mm -hmm. architecture. One, I guess one of the key aspects of that was that it wasn't actually a DSP in the initial um, iteration of that. And I guess there will be in, in, in uh, future versions of that. So is TI becoming an analog company or is it, is it losing its focus? Or are de-emphasizing DSP? No, not at all. We, you know, we love DSP. We've been working on it for pushing 30 years, and I think it's going to be an exciting place for another 30 for all the reasons that we just talked about. So I think those applications will continue to grow. Uh, the OMAP 3500 family, we are really excited about it. We've taken OMAP to the greatest handset companies in the world, and we've had great success. And what we saw was the industry saying we would like OMAP brought outside of just the wireless market. And that's the announcement you saw this week. What sort of applications do you think it'll be targeting? Oh, I, you know, it's going to start. It's going to have great ones like portable media players. You're going to see it moving into medical uh, handheld products. Uh, you're going to see it in different uh, equipment uh, that will monitor uh, combinations of processing video feeds as well as doing transaction processing because just a beautiful balanced platform, high performance risk processing but very high performance yet low power signal processing or image uh, processing, 3D graphics, these are the things the world wants in embedded electronics. Right. We've seen quite a bit of talk on the analog side for low power, right, and also on the MSP430 architecture. That's been, I, I guess that's making a lot of headway. Mm -hmm. um, you see uh, the MSP430 being one of your key lead ways into medical? Well, it is, and it is today already. Yes, and it's an area where we had an announcement of some work we did with uh, MIT uh, to move the power dissipation on a, an MSP430 down even further. And we think those are going to be wonderful things. When you get into areas like embedded medical, uh, power or battery life really matters. Right, right. Changing a defibrillator every five years doesn't sound like much unless you're the person with the defibrillator inside of you. Right. And then 10-year life sounds even better. And so those are the types of things we can do with low-power technology. Do you plan to target the energy harvesting area? 
You know, the beautiful thing about the whole area of the, uh, of the low power is it can be low power slash no power. Mm -hmm. And so you think about getting the dissipation of these circuits down, and now how do you start providing energy, scrounging, harvesting, uh, RF wireless energy? Uh, I think these are all great areas for innovation. Okay. Um, when it comes to in other application areas such as DLPs, um, TI has been pushing DLPs for almost mm -hmm. 15 years now, I think it is thereabouts. What's your take on DLPs and the future of it? Yeah, we've actually, I think, been working on DLP maybe even longer than that, which shows our tenacity or our uh, sustainability. Uh, it's become a great business for front projectors. It's become a great business, but a smaller one for 60-inch and greater TV displays. Uh, it's the primary engine for digital cinema. Uh, but we've got some interesting new places like these uh, very tiny Pico projectors that could be embedded in cell phones or maybe into notebook PCs. Uh, and we've also been looking at different applications of DLP uh, into the medical market for vein finders uh, or using them in areas like optical cross connects or imaging uh, applications as well. So I think there's uh, other ways we can use the DLP technology to grow with our customers. Around this time last year, we were talking about um, TI as having lost maybe some market share in handsets in the baseband side. Have you addressed that, and do you see that as being an issue going forward? Yeah, there were certainly a lot of announcements back in the middle of 07 right. around a lot of different competitors coming right. in. Yeah. And what you've seen during that time frame is you've seen us win back business at customers like Ericsson, continue to grow very strong and do well at customers like Nokia. And you've actually watched us on the application processor side, which I think is the most important one going forward, get even stronger with our customers as we move ahead. So we, we feel pretty good about where we are. And companies like Intel, um, they're targeting their Silverthorne processor in the mobile space, and they're also looking at incorporating Wi-Fi and WiMAX. Do you see that as being a competitor going forward? You know, there's going to be a number of competitors in the marketplace or ones that try to get in it. Intel's tried to get in it in the past. I still think that starting from our position, which is in a very significant leading spot with both the modem and the application processor side, uh, it's a great position to be starting from. Best performance in the world, lowest power in the world, and that's usually what matters, uh, what matters most for our customers. And that's it from the Texas Instruments Developer Conference here in Dallas, Texas. Thanks for joining us. This is Patrick Mannion, Editor-in-Chief of Tech Online, signing off. Thank you for your time.